This video is going to be discussing the dungeons in Destiny 2, the seven dungeons that we have, and rating them on difficulty in terms of the Solar Flaws aspect of these dungeons, not basing them on fire team runs, but only the Solar Flaws aspect of them. The, the difficult thing about doing this, though, is that some, some of the outdated dungeons when they launched were a lot harder than what they are in 2023. So I think that you need to do two different tier ratings for these dungeons um, to be fair to them. For example, Shattered Throne. You can't judge it as it is in 2023 only. You've got to judge it when it launched in 2018 as well. And there's other examples of that. So I'll do one tier list, ranking the dungeon on how difficult it was to Solar Falls when it launched that year, if you like. And then on this tier list, what the dungeon is like to Solar Falls this year. And you'll see the contrast because of power creep and stuff like that. So if I put a dungeon in S rank, this means it's the most... It's very difficult to solve flaws. If I put a dungeon in D rank, it means it's very easy to solve flaws. So I'll do it from launch. So the first dungeon to launch was Shattered Throne in 2018. I won't be reviewing the master dungeon difficulties of some of the dungeons because some of the dungeons don't have a master difficulty. So it's only looking at the standard version of each one. So first of all, we've got Shattered Throne, right? <clears throat> so if I just get some footage of, of Shattered Throne. So if I just pause it here, look. So if you see, you imagine running this day one, week one, 2018, just look at the grand scale of it. Um, it's sort of shown you a, a, a city. It looks bigger than what it actually is when you get to it, but it gives a good sense of scale, this first encounter. So top marks for that. But in terms of difficulty, though, it isn't that difficult once you know, but on a blind run, you wouldn't have a clue where to go and where the symbols associate with what area because you kill a target, you get a symbol. It's the last wish symbols, of course. You use you use those and then you go to the next area and you kill the next VIP target. It has a nice flow, this first encounter. I think it's good at introducing this, uh, this dungeon. So I feel as though nowadays it's one of the easiest encounters though in any dungeon. Um... Add dense, sure, but builds that we have nowadays uh, make short work of it. So even when it first came out, this wasn't a, a run killer for your solar flaws, the start of it. So I wouldn't really say that this bit was difficult in 2018 or nowadays. So it hasn't aged well, <clears throat> but it is a good introduction. Then we go to the descent. This is the traversal section. This is... A good spectacle for the dungeon because what a traverse section in Destiny 2 should do for dungeons is they should give you the illusion that you, you're not running from one encounter to the next so that what you're doing feels completely different to what you've just done. Which Shattered Throne is successful for because when you're running through it, um, the scale of it's huge, right? And it's not just killing enemies. There is a lot of enemies on this traversal section actually, but it's not really an encounter per se. But I feel as though it's a nice break from what you've just done on the first encounter. You could also, this would be a run killer, by the way, because the traversal section was actually doing it for the first time. You could easily die, like on the Ogre section, easily die on this bit, uh, on a blind run. You would definitely get knocked off, by, knocked off by these Ogres, or you would just fall off the map yourself, because you'd be like, what is this place? So this was actually quite difficult for the Soul Floss on a blind run. Outside of blind runs, no, because you know where to go. So, But that's not the dungeon's fault. That's just because you know the knowledge in advance. So then you've got the Thrall where you've got all this stuff. You then come to the first boss fight of the dungeon, right, which there is two, with raid light mechanics. The reason why, um, obviously, it's raid light is so that somebody can solo it. Because... This dungeon was made for solo players first, fire team second, but it was it was made so that you could play with two people or solo. But it had to be that the mechanics were soloable, right? Because that's where the whole solo solo flawless idea came for dungeons. I will say though that the emblem for the eternal return for this dungeon wasn't solo flawless, it was just solo. But that's here or there because right after this dungeon. All dungeons were solar flawless. It's just that they hadn't come up with that idea until the year after. But I'm not going to factor that into my video. I'm just going to refer to things as solar flawless all the time because that's what the nature of dungeons are nowadays and have been since 2019. So this first boss, Borgoth, 
Is he difficult in 2023? No, because you can easily solo one phase and with li literally anything in the game. However, back in 2018, Forsaken, the sandbox was much tougher. You had less ability usage. There was a lot. The game was tuned almost nearly perfectly for PvE, by the way. That might have been the best sandbox that we've ever had in terms of difficulty to build ratio was on point. And things were difficult. This boss fight was difficult to solo one phase then, which meant if you weren't solo one phase, and guess what? The wizards respawn. So if you're three phase in this boss, that's 12 wizards you have to kill. And snipers. Oh, all of a sudden this boss fight's difficult now, right? Whereas this year you're just killing four wizards and one phase, and which bypasses mechanics to somewhat... You need you only need to do the mechanics once, which the mechanic is petitions mark. The wizard drops that. It stacks to four times, you get a big buff, you take down the boss's shield. But when you're even doing DPS, it was difficult back then because uh, of the void orbs that the boss would um, throw at you. Uh, so people really didn't even know how to DPS this boss in 2018 properly. I'll be honest, people didn't actually get their solo fallers shattered thrown or their solo shattered thrown until Anarchy and Mountaintop come out. That's where people actually started to do this. So that was because of the weapons, not because of skill or something. So yeah, this fight was very difficult back then, but nowadays it, it, it hasn't aged well because of the health pill. The mechanics are intact. The mechanics are fine, actually. They hold up. What doesn't hold up is the boss's HP, which they need to buff this boss's HP. Then there's more traversal. It's the same thing as the traversal section. Um, it's very well designed. You can easily lose a solar force by falling off map. Um, and that was the biggest worry for people on their first clears of this dungeon back then. Then we come to the final boss for Duel in, in Karoo. This fight, in 2018, you got the three knights, right? You then you're faced with a boss. Now, the boss is weak to precision damage because the precision multiplier on this boss is sort of really high because wizards do have that, but this boss is quite unique in that, in that sense. Back in 2018, you were able to solo one phase this boss by using Solo Hunter Celestial Nighthawk. The Golden Gun Shot would do 9999 to the boss and kill instantly. So the meta run, solo run, for this would be a Solo Celestial Nighthawk Hunter with Whisper of the Worm. Because Whisper of the Worm would grant ammo back. Whisper of the Worm just came out the season before, Forsaken. And not everybody had it. So guess what? If you're not a Hunter man... You don't have Whisper of the Worm. This fight's very difficult because every phase you don't kill the boss. You've got another three knights to kill. So imagine you're solo three phases in this boss in 2018. You've got nine knights to clear. Nine knights. That is incredible in difficulty back then. Even if it's a two phase, that's six knights and unlimited spawn and scions. So this fight back then was very difficult and balanced apart from what I've mentioned with the solo hunter. Nowadays, you can easily kill these three knights on and all scions because of builds in the game. So scions aren't a problem to you. Um, and obviously, Roman servers that we have in the game are absolutely insane, like what I'm using here. Um, so nowadays, this fight hasn't aged well because of the health pools of the knights and the boss. The final forts buff that you pick up to damage boss, yeah, there is another mechanic. That runs out. If you if that runs out and you don't kill boss and you have not cleansed yourself, yes, you have to cleanse yourself if you don't kill boss with foul thoughts in the middle here, then you wipe. That would have been a problem if you don't have Whisper of the Worm 2018. You would have might have needed to solo two phase. And that was pre that was sorry, that was before Anarchy Mountaintop came out. Anarchy Mountaintop didn't come out until a couple of seasons later. So um, let's just rank this dungeon, of course. Right, so I've talked all about it. Right, so to rank it in at launch 2018, I'm giving it an S tier for the reasons I've stated. The only OP things at the time was Sessual Night Arc, Whisper of the Worm, and if you didn't run either of those two, it was a very difficult solo flawless back then, and people didn't even understand what a dungeon was back then. So I would, I would say it's S. Nowadays, in 2023, it's a D tier because it's the easiest solo falls dungeon to do because of the lack of HP that bosses have. So let's move swiftly on because I've talked probably too much about that. So if we go to solo falls pit of heresy, uh, I'll just get any video up, it doesn't really matter. So 
So with Perisic that launched with Shadow Keep, right? So Shadow Keep was looked upon as being worse than Forsaken, so it was already on worse standing. But how difficult was Pit Perisic back then? So Pit Perisic back then, um, I mean, this isn't footage of that exact, but I'm just here just to sort, sort of show you the mechanics. If you're running blind, day one, you've got this opening encounter, which is similar, right? You've got these symbols. It's similar to Shattered Thrones opening encounter. So you need to associate a symbol with a area, kill a knight to get a sword, then the knight, the, the sword would then kill VIP targets. VIP targets differ how you kill them. Light swings for wizards, uh, for knights, heavy attacks for wizards, block for, shield, for shriekers. Right, so it was pretty simple once you knew, but the blind run of this would have been difficult at first, and once you figure it out, I think even then it wasn't that difficult. It wasn't a run killer. The only the only run killer of this part was ogres, but you could bypass the ogres very easily. So I don't really rate this activity, uh, this sorry, this encounter that much, and it really does. This is where Peter Ferris falls down because it relies heavily too much on the sword, the sword relic. You know, you can keep getting them and stuff. You have a high ammo count on the swords. Um, say what you want, but I didn't really like this encounter in 2019, and I don't really like it now either. So it hasn't aged well, and I don't think it's that difficult either, once you know. This is where I look differently, though. The Ogre Maze of Pit of Heresy is one of the best dungeon encounters that we've had. Why? Because you've got some unkillable Ogres, right? Pretty much similar to VOG in terms of stealth. If you don't know anything about me, I actually quite like stealth games like Metal Gear Solid, Hitman, and stuff like this. And I know that Destiny 2 doesn't have stealth per se, but this is like a stealth encounter because you have to avoid the ogres and their detection and stuff. Like, if you avoid being detected by an ogre, it's easier and less chance of death. Back in 2019, they would melt the ogres. You needed to know the path. It's a maze, right? So you would kill a knight, get an orb, and then you needed to know where to dunk the orb. There's three doors which lead you to the next encounter. So I would do left, mid, right. That was my rotation. But my rotation wasn't always like that. Sometimes my rotation would be a mess when I was brand new to Pit of Heresy in 2019 and a lot of us. So it was difficult, this part. And a lot of people would die to the ogres because they wouldn't understand how to manipulate them. Until the, to this day, people still sort of sometimes get questions about the ogres. Oh, how do you get past this bit? And what's the easiest way of doing it? So even to now, like to now, people still struggle with it. But um, mastery of this completion is good once you know the underground path and stuff. So I think it's it was difficult, this encounter, I think, in 2019. However, there is ball duplication, orb duplication. So we'll move to the next encounter, Chamber of Suffering. So I'll just talk about that. In 2019, there was a bug, many bugs, it led, it led on to 2020, 2021, I think. There was many bugs regarding orb duplication. So you could pick up an orb and dunk an orb and get another one back. Very similar to the battery um, cheese that you have in uh, Battleground GMs right now. Same situation as that. But the way you do that is slightly different, I think. Anyways, you only need to dunk six orbs for Chamber of Suffering for this encounter. So people would just pop a well and then dunk six orbs or a bubble and then be done with it. And everybody done that, even on Solo Flawlesses. So this encounter loses points because of that bug. It's not the dungeon's fault. It was Bungie for not patching it quickly enough. They did try, but then it was funny because another way come out and then another way of uh, of duping orbs. And it was unfortunate. But if I was to judge this encounter in terms of difficulty and people were doing a legit run, this is probably the hardest encounter in the whole Pit of Heresy dungeon because the Chamber of Suffering encounter is Raid Light King's Fall. It's a totem plate. It wipes you if you don't stand on it every couple of seconds. The Curse of Suffering buff goes higher and higher until you get a dunk. The higher that Curse of Suffering buff goes, the harder you get hit by the Acolytes and the enemies and stuff. When you get a dunk from the orb, you get Boomanites and Thrall and stuff. And if you didn't have an ad clear build on, this was a, this was difficult in 2019, I know. I know it from first experience. Nowadays, not, not so much. You've got Strand Titan. You've got Infinite uh, Solar Restoration. You've got all sorts of things. Devour. You had Devour then, but you've got Devour now on Titan and Hunter as well. So this encounter is not difficult nowadays, but I think in 2019 it was, which is why people was cheesing it. 
we then come to the next part, jump puzzle, the harrow, right? The harrow was interesting because um, I remember this was a run killer for people. People were comfortable with Zolmak. They were comfortable with the entire run apart from this, the jump puzzle, because these rollers would one-shot you. So imagine you're doing really well on your run. You've done a legit clear of Chamber of Suffering. You haven't cheesed, and, and, and a roller kills you because you were a little bit lazy with your jumps. And if you don't know where you're going, right, See, the wizards would flush you out and then cause you to maybe make a misstep and fall off. So I, I did remember at the time talking to a few people saying, oh, I hate that bit with the wizards because they um, they absolutely melt you and all this. Nowadays, because the maps are out there and people know where to go anyways, you're not going to lose a solar force nowadays unless you are, have not played this. So a blind run, this part was lethal because you didn't know where to go. The wizards have a high chance of killing you and you could have fell off map and roller would one shot you. So solo flawless, this would end here for some people. Nowadays, no, obviously not. So Zomak, we move on to the only boss of Pit of Heresy. This is a bad point. We had just had Shattered Throne last year, 2018. I'm just talking from that perspective. So imagine 2019. The year before this, we had just had Shattered Throne with two good dungeon bosses with raid light mechanics fleshed out very difficult. We then get this boss. This boss, whilst is difficult to DPS at the time in 2019, because the meta was Izanagi's Burden and a heavy GL and what have you. And there was the fire and the curse for all. So it was hard to DPS the boss until Solar One Face started coming out. But the actual fight itself, there was a lot of cover. Once you got one side down with one of the VIP targets, you could hide there if you wanted to. Um... I do. The only run killer was that people would overcommit to damage back then. They would die to the soul and be like, oh, why did I die there? Whatever. And bear in mind, at the stage of when Pit Verity launched, swords were poor. They ended up getting a buff a couple of seasons after that, and then swords took supreme. And then when we got Lament, obviously it's game over at that point, uh, the year later in 2020. So. 2019 solo on this was pretty difficult, but I don't think it was as, as difficult as the dungeon before if we rated at launch. As of now, this is a very easy clear in 2023 because you can one phase with strand and stuff and everything else, solo two phase is very easy with a lot of weapons. You've saw me run pit a lot and it's more of a speed run dungeon. How quickly can you do it? So that's my review of Pit Heresy. So what do we do with pit? Right, when it launched, I would say to B tier because it loses points because people were choosing at the time because of orb duplication. So it goes as a B tier. As of 2023, it's a D tier. It's a very easy Solar Flaws dungeon to do. It's one of the easiest ones. This and Shattered From. They both go in the uh, worst tier, as in easiest. So now I'll move on. So what do we want now? We want Prophecy. Obviously, I've got all the. Um, it's just to get footage up. Not all this is OG footage. I just, I'm just randomly picking one. So with Prophecy, that launched with um, Season of Arrivals. So Season of Arrivals, if you don't know, is one of my absolute favourite seasons. It might be my second favourite season with Season of Opulence being the best, Season of Arrivals being number two, in my opinion, because a lot of stuff happened that season. It was almost like an expansion. When I think about it now, I'm like... That felt like an expansion. It didn't even feel like a season. It felt more than a season. It's like, what is this game? And then obviously, that's what they do though. Before a major expansion, they make the last season strong. They've done this historically every year. Anyways, Prophecy launches. It's free to play, by in mind as well. Free to play. And literally, it's the best dungeon they've made. Because it has a lovely flow. The mechanic is fun to do over and over because there's nuance to it. Because, yeah, it's simple, light and dark. You kill a knight in dark, you get dark modes and then light, etc. But there's nuance to it because there's combat difficulty to it because the rooms are lit differently and there's loads of different rooms. So it's like a Rubik's Cube, the, the dungeon, because each time you play, it's a little bit different. The combination of getting to, to, to do it is a little bit different. Um, so how difficult was this to do? Right, the... Uh, 2020, so it launched, what, summer 2020 or whatever, the season before um, Beyond Light and what have you. So how how difficult was it? 
Well, it was super difficult, the week one experience, because I know I was there actively doing it. The thing about it that made it very difficult, it's one of the best solo flawless experiences I've ever had in Destiny 2. Probably that, it goes up there with Whisper, Zero Hour, and this. The, those are the three top solo experiences I've had in terms of the day one, the week one experiences, because you had to level... Right, so I, I leveled from Tuesday to Friday frantically like a madman using umbral engrams, yeah? So you needed not only to level up, power grind, you then needed to get your gear ready and then go with the dungeon, right? And then learn it. You had to learn it in a fire team, then you would go for the solar flawless. It was very difficult because of DPS to the boss. This is where damage over time weapons became supreme in the game, in my opinion. This is where they started to, an activity required you to run a damage over time weapon. Back then, back then, not now it's not required, but back then it was sort of, you should be running with a hard. You should be using Anarchy Mountaintop because that's just favourable to killing knights and it's favourable to doing DPS to bosses. So the first encounter introduced you to light and dark mechanic. I think that this encounter isn't difficult at all, but it does a good job of introducing the mechanics to you. So I think it's fine as it is. The first boss, obviously there's two bosses in this one now, which is better than Pit, because it's got two bosses. The first boss is a Tyrkan Phalanx that can knock you off of the map at any time. And it's a small map. It's designed on purpose this way so that the combat difficulty is that you need to keep rotating around. The knights were vicious. The knights were super vicious in 2019. They would chase you down. Their solar was buffed compared to now. If you didn't know, Knights got uh, nerfed. Their solar damage is less of an area of effect, does less burn damage. Back then, it was worse, and they would chase you and chase you and chase you, and that's where people would die on the first boss right away. Not only that, they couldn't manage the Scions, so people couldn't even do this encounter, never mind getting further on, and that was just week one. This went on for months, by the way. There was people who fought and fought to try and get Solar Flaws Prophecy, and they couldn't. I know because I, know I was involved within it at the time, talking to people about it. More casual players, I can't do this, would you do it for me? And obviously, when people ask me, would you do it for me, I said, no, I've never done a Soul Falls Clay for anyone, just to say it on record, but loads of people were asking me, will you do this, will you do that? I said, no, I won't, but I will give you tips on how to do it. Um, and obviously, that's where I started making a lot of videos on Prophecy. And, um, a lot of people did get clears from some of my videos, by learning from them. So anyways, his first fight was difficult, yeah, in 2019. 2023, not so much, because everything can solo one phase this boss, but you could solo one phase in 2019 with swords, because they got buffed. They got buffed. You had Fallen Guillotine come out. Weller Radiance would bypass Teva. Warlock was king for this encounter. Bubble Titan could make it work, solo one phase still, with the weapons of light and a sword... That was still possible, but more difficult. And a hunter was kind of poor overall, although you could do uh, Anarchy Tether. I uh, remember seeing that. So this fight, it was difficult in 2023, but uh, sorry, in 2019, but in 2023, very easy. The Wastelander area is the traverse. It's not traversal, but it's a, it's a mid-encounter. And I feel as though people did lose their soul falls on this if you played careless with the snipers. But I don't think it was meant to be difficult. It was just meant to be a sub-encounter. So I think that this encounter is fine as it is. And nowadays, it's very easy just to run through. And I think back then, it wasn't that bad to run through either. So then we come on to the Hexahedron encounter, right? The Cube Room. So the Cube Room is one of the most interesting dungeon encounters that we've ever had because the room keeps... It's one room, but it keeps flipping. But... Every time you get a flip, the light and dark, the shadows, they change each. It changes, which means you have to engage with knights differently because, remember, you've got the light and dark mechanic to do. And you have snipers. So you were stuck in this room with snipers, right? You were stuck in the room with snipers and you were stuck in the room with infinite ads. So if you weren't on top back then and you didn't use Devour or some good health build, you were struggling on this bit. People would die with the snipers. The snipers don't hit nowhere near like what they used to. Like, look at this footage. They're very poor. But back back in 2019, no, I remember the snipers actually did wipe me a few occasions. 
So very difficult to encounter back then. Nowadays, not so much because you've got health regen builds more than ever on every single class that we have. So I highly rate the, that encounter because every time you play it, it's a little bit different. It feels a little bit different. We then got the Rainbow Road. I don't need to say too much about this because this is not an encounter, but I will say it's a run killer. You would probably lose your solo flaws on this to the snipers. And I remember, I actually did as well back then, like the week one experience on the Saturday night. So it launched on Friday night. Or, or, or did it launch with reset? No, it launched with reset, it did prophecy. So when I ran it on the, on the Saturday night after I leveled that week, I, I, I lost my run here. I lost a run here. So back then, it was a, a great spectacle for this dungeon. But once you know, you know. Nowadays, no, it's not difficult. People sparrow fly it as well to mention. So now the final boss of Prophecy, this is where I believe to be the best dungeon boss ever created because you've got the light and dark mechanic, you've got the rooms that split, and each room is so unique that you've got to play them differently. If you've got Wither Horde on or Anarchy, not so much, but if you use another weapon loadout, you really do have to play a little bit different each time. And you've got to know each room, where's best for light, where's best for dark, how do we deal with the knights, etc. So, and there's infinite scions spawning. So back then in 2019, if you went on a Devour Warlock, this was difficult. And as I said, there was people struggling with the first boss fight, never mind this one, which I believe this fight's harder than the Phalanx, in my opinion, because of how DPS works. So you do the Light and Dark uh, mechanic, you would look what you need to dunk, right? You would do that. You would then come to DPS. Now, DPS is where people suffer. This was a run killer. People will be... You know, on the final phase of damage, they've been on four to five phases. And they're like, how do you do damage? How do you do damage? Well, I knew how to do damage right away, which is why I got my clear right up. Well, not, not right away, but I analyzed and saw that, all oh, right, there's this dark entropy debuff. I have to play ahead of the boss and kill the snipers in advance, whereas people wouldn't do that back then. And even to this day, you've got... The thing about this fight is because you're transported, you're teleported to a different area, there's nuance to the fight so you can do the fight in your own little way and i do the fight in my own little way and i've seen that some people most people don't actually copy the way i do it which i'm fine with that because they probably may be a little bit more skilled than me and they maybe don't want to do it the way i do it but the way i do it right is almost foolproof because i play ahead of the boss so this is one of the greatest dps phases on any boss fight in destiny 2 almost solo wise Solo-wise, it's one of the greatest designs ever. In terms of back then, it was difficult to solo three phase week one. Never mind two phase. Nowadays, we two phase all the time. And you can solo one phase as well with certain builds in 2023. So now I've talked about Prophecy. Let's rate it. So Prophecy, as a week one experience, it's S tier. You know it's going there with me. You know how much I love it. And I know and I know that it's one of... Back then, it was one of the most difficult solo flawless dungeons to do at launch. At launch. 2023, nowadays, it's probably going in a B tier because I feel as though there's so much information on the dungeon that it's not even an A tier. I mean, gradually, it was an A tier, right? But then it slowly moved down and all these OP mods that we're getting just makes Prophecy so much easier. There's so much ad clear builds in the game. It's, it's actually, in 2023, a B tier. No, I wouldn't put it on C. I think that'd be a bit unfair, but B tier. Right, so now we move on. So now we've got Grasp of Avarice, right? So we'll get that loaded. So Grasp of Avarice. Uh, I think this was Volatile Rounds. I think this was a Volatile Rounds build. But it's just to get footage up. So Grasp of Avarice launched with the 30th anniversary, I believe. Um... And it was very good, Grasp, as a day one experience, fire team wise. But obviously, I'm not really on a fire team wise. I will say it was one of the best experiences. Like to play it, it's like pirate themed and stuff. It was so interesting um, at the time. So you've got this opening encounter. Everyone knows how this opening encounter works. So, you know, you, you've got the riches. And I think it's a good introduction on how the mechanic works because it's riches. So, Enemies drop engrams. You pick up an engram, you get riches. When the riches runs out, you then lose. Uh, you can wipe. So you've got to dunk them in the crystal, but you don't physically dunk them. They just depreciate in the crystal. 
I feel as though this wasn't hard. The week one, day one experience for this, it was just teaching you. And I think nowadays, it's definitely not hard. It's just something that you do. Then it's just got exploration. This is where I think that, yeah, this was run killers, blind runs. You would hit a trap and then die. So this is what I'm saying. It was such a fantastic day one, week one experience because you were figuring out the traps. So you wouldn't get so fast because a trap would kill you. Nowadays, you know where the traps are. You know everything about it. So the replayability of Grasp isn't that good because we've done it. You understand it. I would have liked if the traps were RNG and somehow you had to work it out and it was sort of a puzzle and that each time you'd done it, it was slightly different, which give it meant that you had to use a bit of mental capacity, just a little bit. Because once you know, you know. But I will say, it's the only like encounter I can think of as like traps and stuff. Apart from Zero Hour had that. Like where you had to pull a lot of levers and stuff like that. And the floor trap and and, you know, and Trevor. And so grasp. The, the initial parts aren't difficult, but they're well designed as a day one experience. But the replayability isn't good because you know the puzzle already. So now we come to the first boss fight of grasp. The first boss fight of grasp is, in my opinion, decently balanced. I think it's okay. And I think that people did struggle a little bit but we had i believe we had particle deconstruction so this is where the difficulty i think isn't that high for this dungeon i remember talking to people uh and them getting their solar flawless pretty quickly on this one as opposed to shattered throne or, or pit those two took a little longer but by this time i think dungeons that we understood as players what a dungeon was more the dps wasn't that high for this because of particle deconstruction and people were using that. I believe it was particle deconstruction for this season. I think it, I think it did launch with it. Or was that Spire? I think it was for this. No, it was for this because Sleeper was doing huge damage. I remember Sleeper doing huge damage to this boss. So the DPS requirements, this is where bosses got tanky though. I will state. So the first season felt okay for it to run, but when we lost mods, when you ran it back, it was so difficult to do damage because the boss, the timing window started to come down. So to give you reference, Prophecy was like 50 seconds for the first damage window of the boss. And then Keleko was a minute or so. And then, then we started to go to 30 seconds. This is where it started to suffer solo-wise because the DPS requirements were a bit higher. And if you didn't have a certain build, um, you were struggling to do damage back then. I'm on about when it launched. If you're talking about 2023, this boss is used more for testing than anything. Not very difficult. It's the cannon mechanic and you get the riches. Um, I, I don't foresee much difficulty because you keep getting your super back. So I don't rate this boss being that difficult. Uh, I know it's harder on master, but we're not rating the master difficulty. So you can keep super in each room. So I don't see much difficulty with this fight overall, even back then. So this is the difficult, this is the run killer, the sparrow part for grasp. This is arguably more difficult than the boss that you just did. Because the sparrow section, people kept wiping like, look, I know the start of kill the ads. Like people would try and just do it one run and say, you don't understand how the timers work. You don't get more time just because you've run through it, uh, just because you've sparrowed through faster. The time resets for each CP. So I don't get more time for C just because I've sped to B quicker. Do you get it? So people didn't understand that fact. So you could have used blind and nade. So people really suffered and said, how do you do the sparrow bit? I keep dying. I get to the sparrow bit and I die. This was when it launched. And I was telling people, just use rockets. Use a blind and GL and get back on your sparrow and then do that. You don't have to use it with always on time. I remember back then I didn't even have always on time. I had some other sparrow. I think it was a, it was a good sparrow because it had a unique perk on it. It had a raid perk, but it wasn't a raid sparrow. Um, but it was slower than always on time. So you didn't have to use it, but I will say it was very interesting, the Sparrow section, um, and it was a run killer for so far. So it was, it was lethal to people back then. Nowadays, not so much. Feels as though that you know the information on it. So then we got Destroy the Fallen Shield. This was a very interesting encounter. It was good for the day one experience and all that stuff, but outside of that, once you know, you know, and it's more of a hindrance. It's quite long of an encounter, so you've got to get riches to take down a shield off a servitor, but then you move these cannons, and then the, the servitor turns into a bomb, and then you take down the fallen shield. So it's got a good idea. Uh, it's just 
just a little boring once you know, you know. You, so back then it was interesting and I was like, oh, we love this. But then over time, gradually you get sick of it and it's not that difficult either. We then move to the file boss for Grasp. Now, this is where the issues becomes with Grasp. Grasp's okay up until this point. Everything's fine with it because the amount of riches that you need to dunk per phase is different. So for this fight, it was 60 riches you needed to dunk solo, which was difficult at the time, whereas the first boss was only 25 or 24 or whatever, yeah, which is a lot less. So getting 60 riches back then, if you didn't know the double, can uh, the d the double cannon shot, which you probably didn't at that time. So you were spending 40, nearly 50 minutes on this boss fight back then. And the boss was super tanky. But like I said, there was particle deconstruction. So people were discovering, use sleeper, use this linear, use that Ridge Regret. I think Ridge Regret was out at the time. I'm sure it was. So it was like, and there was VIP targets in mid middle that were very tanky. Uh, and the 60 riches. And where do you DPS from? People didn't really understand where to DPS from solo-wise. But I, I figured out that you could do it at the back of the map. And I know other people figured it. I wasn't the only one that figured that out, obviously. So I, th I would give it... I, I think it was kind of difficult grasp. But, I mean, I got the week one solo flawless, but um, I don't think it was on Prophecy's level. And nowadays, this, this fight isn't very difficult because the double cannon strat that you can do to get riches very fast. So I think that's me covering that fight, right? Um, nothing much else to say about it. I wasn't a massive fan of this fight because of how many riches that you needed, I suppose, and it gets a bit boring after. There's the replayability of this dungeon's power, I think. So we'll close that down. We'll rate Grasp. So Grasp, as of 20, when it launched, I would say we'll give it an A tier because of the Sparrow section, ending people's runs. Uh, and the DPS windows for the bo both bosses was lower than other dungeons. So we had 30 seconds for the Ogre and then 28 seconds for Keleko or 29. So in terms of 2023, though, Grasp, it's got to go less than Prophecy. I wouldn't give it a D tier. I'd give it a C. Put it in the C tier because there's traps to learn and stuff. Uh, I suppose if you know that, you know that. I wouldn't put it quite in the D, maybe C. Um, but And you keep getting your suit back from Richie, so I could even put it in the D. But I'll be favourable to it and put it in the C to you as of running it 2023. So now we come on to duality, right? So this was only, this was 2022. This is where the game really, for Dungeons, really stepped up. All right, so let's just put... Now, this was a this is this was with our classy restoration. We'll have this one on. So if you don't know what classy restoration is, I can sort of go over that in a minute because that's a that that is a thing that hindered the launch of this dungeon. So this dungeon revolves around bells, and there was a lot of bugs revolving around this dungeon. Backpacks exploding, killing people, which they are meant to, but they were quite severe back then. So people were dying to physics in this dungeon for the solar flawless. And the bell would kill you. It didn't, wasn't like that at launch, but it ended up being like that. Or it maybe was like that at launch. I'm not so sure. But yeah, the bell. So if you activate a bell, sometimes it would wipe you because you need to go through the standard realm and the nightmare realm. So when you go into the nightmare realm, sometimes you die Or when you activate a bell. So this first section was just traversal, and I thought it was okay. It's just teaching you the bell mechanic. I don't think it's difficult. Uh, and I don't remember this bit being difficult. You just needed to know where to go. That was it. Um, we then go to the first boss, right? Which was um, are we on? Which was the Nightmare of Galran, right? So this is a very well designed boss, and the boss has a perfect amount of HP, in my opinion, for a dungeon boss. Because uh, the solo two phase is quite tight, the solo one phase is very difficult. If, well, it, it isn't difficult if you've got a setup on that can do it, like Strand Titan and stuff, you can easily do it. But um, the solo two phase, you've got to think about it. So most of you back then, when it launched, was um, solo three phase, even with Lament. So this fight was very mechanic heavy because you had the Leviathan raid mechanics a little bit with the cup and the, the symbols. 
And then you had to go to the Nightmare Realm, pick up the uh, correct symbol, and then dunk it in the outside, uh, sorry, back in the standard world, this this area here. Then you there would be a lot of combat experience with it, and the glaives shined in this bit. I remember people using glaives um, just to get through it because glaives was really good. Uh, and I remember how my first clear for, for Soul Flowers, back then, I did use a glaive. So... Yeah, there's some difficulty with it. The DPS, I mean, Lament was was the thing to run. There are other options now, but back then, Lament was the go-to. We did have Classy Restoration. So Classy Restoration came out with the Solar 3.0, which meant when you dodge, you get infinite Solar Restoration. So Solar Hunter broke this dungeon, and that's where it loses points for difficulty. Classy Restoration hasn't came back since then. So technically, the, the difficulty of this, this is what's interesting about this dungeon. The difficulty of this dungeon has actually creeped up a little bit because when it came out, the, the, the there was an OP mod and everyone was doing it on a hunter. My first soul force was a hunter with Classic Restoration for this. So this is where I think nowadays, you know, you've got to think about it. When you're going to run a soul force duality, you've got to get your head together a little bit and think, right, what am I doing for this build, for that build, you know? It's not that difficult, 2023, but I feel as though it's balanced well. It's just the bugs that evolved. Now we've got more traversal. The traversal is where I think this dungeon isn't that good. As opposed to Shattered Front, outclasses this dungeon by a mile for traversal. I mean, the scale and scope of things. This feels very small. You're running through these small corridors. It opens up a bit here, but... It's just activating switches. It feels very Leviathan-based, which I suppose that's what it's meant to do, so I can't complain too much, but I can just say that the traversal in this dungeon doesn't feel that enjoyable to run. It just, you know, it, it, it sort of is what it is. But not 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 super difficult. You can lose a solo force there, of course. So now the Vault Encounter. This is where it was strict. I remember when it came out, people struggling to do this. Like, look, you get 60 seconds. Nightmare collapsing. You've got to kill your phalanxes, all your enemies, get your standard bearer, kill the Colossus, and pick up symbol, then pick up, then kill two backpacks, then hit the bell and go back. So you would see people struggling to actually do all that. You would have to strategize to kill the um maybe a machine gun like I'm running here, or a barrier weapon for whatever season you're doing it. So this was difficult, Vault. I would say it was on par like with Chamber of Suffering sort of thing in that sense. So you really are timed and you've got to push. Like, look, I'm on 30 seconds here, but some people were doing two bearers in 60 seconds, which was insane, which I don't really do go for that strap. But imagine that, people doing two bearers in 60 seconds. You know, I've, I'm playing all out here. I've only just got one. I've got 20 seconds left. You do get more time, though, if you're killing a uh, standard bearer, though. Look, I've got like nearly 10 seconds left. I activate. So there's a bit of pressure with Vault. Then you've got to kill your bosses. The bosses rotate. So Vault's a well-designed little encounter. I feel as though it's a little harsh. Um, and each time you run it, you've got to think about what you're doing. You can't mess up too much. So Vault's quite difficult to run then. And it's mini difficult nowadays as well, I suppose, in a sense. Not, I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's maybe a little bit harder now because you don't have classic restoration. So there's Traversal again. I don't need to talk about that. This is the final boss fight, Kirtle. So this is why Kirtle's really well made, right? So you've got this room here. You've got two pillars on the left, two pillars on the right. You've got to look for symbols. Symbols are R and G. You've then got the um, symbols on the walls outside telling you what the symbols will be um, for you to then go and get in the Nightmare Realm. All right, so this is just using the first mechanics from Garran, but there's more combat difficulty because when you're in the Nightmare Realm, if I can try and get the, the clip going when I'm going to the Nightmare Realm, you would have to then kill standard bearers. So not the standard bearers, the backpacks. So lament fusions, fusions being able to disintegrate their backpacks because the backpacks will kill you when you do DPS. So it's a knock-on effect because you're coming back here for damage. So any backpacks on the floor, you know, the backpack they've got on, 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 on their backs, obviously, right? Well, that would be on the floor if you didn't kill them with a fusion, which people were suffering with. So people were getting physics killed by the game. 
So it was a thing. And then you had your Colossuses on the on the final side. So this was combat difficult at the time. Nowadays, as I said, it's maybe people know m more what to expect, but there's no classic restoration, like I said. So DPS is where it, where it really um, does shine, this dungeon. Because I think the boss has the perfect amount of HP for a dungeon. All right. This is where I think dungeons goes to the deep. It went too far with the HP thing. So, but they were somebody was maybe mad because the boss's previous dungeons were starting to be solo one cycled. And I think somebody was mad at Bungie, whoever's making the dungeons, and were like, right, let's let's sort of get the HP up when, when Ghost of the Deep was made. But look at this combat difficult um with the boss. So you weren't just DPS and you had to rotate. There was movement needed, there was snipers shooting you. And people really didn't understand what to do, the strategy, when it first came out. Nowadays, they understand the strategy. It's not as difficult, but if you get a bell wrong, you get knocked by an enemy and the boss rings the bell, then you've lost damage. So that's what I think about duality. So where do we where do we rate duality? When it launched, I would say that the physics made it more difficult, but there was classy restoration in the game. So classy restoration has to put it down a couple of ranks. But the duality is technically challenging and there's odd dense enemies in there. I would give it an A to you. I would have put it S. The reason why I didn't is because of classic restoration being in the game at launch. Right? You've got to you've got to look at the sandbox as well. And that's what the sandbox was at the time. And you had Sully Restoration on and on Titans as well. And other classes and warlocks. So I think it's A. But for 2023 if I was to run it back um, because there's no classy restoration, the, there was still bugs going on. There's still sometimes these bugs going on with it. I'll give it an A to your duality, right? It probably B, but I'll be favorable and give it an A if you to run this back in 2023 because it's still a well designed dungeon. You still have to push on the vault encounter. The bosses have the perfect amount of HP, they don't have too much, they don't have too little. I think it's an A to your dungeon in terms of difficulty. So and I think it was A to you then as well. So I suppose it's, you know, it outweighs itself because there's more information about it. So anyways, we go to Spider the Watcher. I need to hurry up a little bit with this because I don't want this video to be over an hour. But I do want it to be uh, fleshed out. I don't care that it's longer. Because, yeah, I could have done this in what? Uh, you know, I could have done this. I could have done this video in, in, in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. But with that, we'd have no video content and you're just staring at tiles. That's not interesting, is it? So, with Spider the Watcher, this is where, again, they started to give the damage time windows that we suffered with it as a solo player, you suffered. Um, so, the first encounter for Spire, you've got to reestablish the power. You then become into, you're now a mechanic in Destiny 2. So, Spider the Watcher, you are a mechanic. That's your job. Shoot a fuse, move on. However, I will say that there's a bit of mastery to it because once you know the flow of where to go, it's kind of satisfying to shoot these fuses and go to the next one and to the next one. The day one blind experience, right? I was all over this shit, uh, spot. I was like, where does this lead me to? So you had to really learn the fuses. But once you learned them, it was fine. You're just shooting fuses. You would then bypass enemies at that point. So day one, fantastic. But outside of like the week one, day one thing, it started to become a little bit boring and a little bit running similar mechanic. It was it was like there was no requirement to kill any enemies really. I mean there was a requirement to kill one Minotaur, that's it. That's all there was. So this was very hard on the like knowing where to go. But outside of that, you know, there's not that much difficulty with it. So I will push on to the first boss. You've got this Ascend the Spire, which is the same as what I've just said. You become into a mechanic, basically. And I don't think it's that difficult, honestly. Nowadays, it's very it's like very easy. As long as you know the fuses and you've reminded yourself. So now, this is the boss from Garden of Salvation, the, har the Harpy boss. This is a precision-style boss, and there's a runway. There's four runways. It's quite well designed in terms of, oh, your DPS takes a route. But it's nowhere near the same as Kel Echo, like I discussed earlier. Because Kel Echo, you've got to jump, avoid snipers, strategize when you do damage or when not to do damage. This is just like, oh, the boss just goes backwards 
and you're timed. I feel as though this is where the, the gap between console and PC is apparent because you've got to shoot the eyes. Now, you don't get, you lose time. The, the slower you are at shooting the eyes for DPS, if I try and get to a phase, the slower you are at doing that, the less damage time you get. Now, on console, I know it. It's factual. I'm not even just giving you an opinion. On console, you can't shoot the eyes as quick because you're not using a mouse. You've got two thumbs, not, not a forearm. You don't use your forearm on the thumbsticks, do you? You use two thumbs. So doing this was difficult, so you would lose less time. Well, it doesn't think it was difficult. It just meant that I couldn't compete with a PC player. However, things changed where you could use fusion rifles to do uh, eyes, but that wasn't established week one. Week one, people weren't using fusions. They were using Carlos Mini Tool on a good SMG with Cataclysmic, Bait and Switch. So look at that. I used Bait and Switch. I only done 20% HP. So you see what I'm on about there. It's like this boss had so much health. So you were doing five, six phases. So this fight was very annoying to play, and it wasn't difficult. It was just that you had to go through it. So the boss was tuned far too much HP, and the ads weren't difficult at all. So I don't look too fondly on the fight, but it's maybe gotten a little bit, a little bit better over time, I suppose. So you got this stack containment encounter. This is just shooting. The fuse is the same thing, so it's overkill at this point. But then we'll go quickly to the Riven boss, Percy's. So Percy's is one of the best boss fights I've seen in a dungeon because you've got to avoid the boss and know how to play the boss while shooting fuses. This was actually really difficult for people. The supplicants would kill people. Um, I feel as though this as a day one, week one experience was a very difficult challenge because you had to learn the two rooms, right? And then... There was obviously four currents. That you, would, you would then go in the other room, and then it was sort of a ballet of getting the fuses right. This is where the fuses did work well, right? So I, this is my favorite encounter. And DPS was difficult. DPS was very difficult. Obviously, you know that I found out some strategies regarding this boss using Parasite, using Grand Overture, uh, off-meta exotics that you wouldn't have thought was good in this, but then ended up being good. So... Yeah, this fight was difficult to learn for people. I think it was very difficult when it launched. I think it's gotten maybe easier than then over time, though, to be honest. And Well of Radiance was broken when it launched because Well would be counted as super damage. And no, and Bubble didn't have that, but only Well did. So Warlocks were king. So it loses points there a little bit because people were doing Zulfos on Warlocks because it was a little easier. All right? Titan was probably the worst class to do this on, I, in my opinion. Hunter and Warlock being a little bit better. So that's what I think about Spire. I think as it launched, I would give it an A tier. Persis gives it an A tier. I would If it wasn't the fact that Persis wasn't so good, it would have went in the B tier. So it bumps it to an A tier for me because of Persis. Other than that, I would have put it in B because all you're doing is shooting fuses. So the final boss fight is that good. I launch it to A tier. If I was to rerun this in 2023... I would put it on the same sort of footing as Prophecy. It's not as tough as Duality, I don't think. And there's less to think about. Uh, once you know the fuses, you're good. I think it's on a B tier rating. Maybe not quite C because you've got to think about it at Percy's a little bit. The supplicants that can immediately kill you and stuff like that. So I need to move on quickly because we're going to go to the last one, which was Solar Flawless, Ghost of the Deep. Right, so Ghost of the Deep... Um, Ghost of the Deep is probably the most challenging dungeon that we've ever had, ever, because of the boss's HP, which I'll, I'll get into when I get there. So this first encounter is called Break the Ritual. So this is teaching you the mechanics of the dungeon. You've got to follow the trail. It is Season of the Hunt mechanics where you follow the green trail, which isn't bad. It's, you know, this outside area is good to run, but it's too long. So you four times, things come in freeze in Destiny. It should have been three times you do the ritual. You have to do it four times. So it was actually quite difficult to learn, you, you know, but once you know, you know it's that whole thing. So I would say back when it launched, it was only recently, that this encounter isn't the most difficult part of it. It's too long. Um, for it nowadays, it's similar to what it was recently. So um, I'll just move forward. 
So Ektar, the first boss, obviously two bosses in Ghost of the Deep. Ghost of the Deep was with for the bosses, they had too much HP. And Arbalist obviously would break that because it would one shot the shield. Each boss has a shield. This is unique because most bosses don't have shields in this way. You do the encounter, you break the shield. This isn't the case. When DPS starts, the shield's up. So if you didn't have Arbalist on, you're losing DPS right away. The interesting thing about it is the underwater section for Ektar. You had to look upstairs, right, and then put these to these rooms. This was very difficult on the week one, day one experience for people. People was really struggling with ghosts. It's like the boss would kill you here. You would lose pressure resistance, etc. So, and not only that, DPS was difficult. You had to learn it. And people still don't have the emblem today. People still contact me and say, I'm struggling with ghosts. What should I do? What should I do? And, and I sort of give them the, you know, the examples. But it is the most challenging dungeon that we've ever had. So, yeah. yeah I had a flow to it. It was difficult DPS as well. So DPS, combat, everything was difficult. The mechanics were slightly difficult as well. Um, so I highly, obviously, rate that. So I haven't got the traversal section in this particular video. I think I've cut it out. I could go and get that for you. But I don't really need to talk about it too much. That's... The traverse section is okay in this dungeon, but it is kind of long for me. Uh, I suppose that's more because the the bosses HP have the bosses have too much HP. I suppose. So then we come to um, the foul boss. So the foul boss is where the problem starts. See, Ectide only takes two to three minutes to get the damage. This boss was taken eight to ten minutes on week one to get to damage, and if you're doing five to six phases solo. Right, and you struggle in doing that, you better believe this is a difficult fight. And it was. Especially things that if you weren't on a solar titan, you were struggling. If you weren't on an arc hunter, you were struggling. Try doing this on striker. I did. I did it on striker. I can tell you it was very difficult. So um yeah, this is one of the hardest, this is the hardest dungeon encounter that we've got, the hardest dungeon boss that we've got. Just all the things that you had to do. I'm not gonna go over all the mechanics now because the video is already quite long, but there was such there was so much combat difficulty to it, and there was different ways you could do it, and you could strategize with the ads, you could strategize with where to do DPS. You had control of that, which people didn't realize, but you did. You actually had control of where you would do, which I would DPS from mid. That's just how I would do it like that. Some people would use certain other locations, not to mention Oryx was part of the battlefield, which was genius. So and there was hard guardians to kill and all that stuff. So yeah, I re highly rate this. So where would we rate that? So for Ghost of the Deep, I would say to S to you. Obviously, it launched this year, so I've got to give it S both times. But I will say when it launched, there was electric armor, and there isn't electric armor now. So in actual fact, it's slightly diff more difficult. But to counter that, there's more information about the dungeon now on YouTube and Twitch. So, but it's S to you both times. So to go over it, S to you for when we launched. Shattered Throne when it launched was S. Prophecy when it launched was S. Ghost of the Deep when it launched was S. Grasp was A when it launched. Duality was A when it launched. Spire A when it launched. Pit B when it launched. In 2023 to run back these dungeons, obviously Ghost is S. Duality if I run it this year is A to you. Prophecy B, Spire B, Grasp C, and then Pit and Shattered Throne if I run them in 2023. They haven't aged well at D to you. Thank you very much for that. That was just me rating the dungeons in Destiny 2.